object call. Last week we saw uh, some screenshots from Sipke and some demo from Nick. Uh, Sipke, do you have a demo today? Is it uh, there? Yeah. I'm here. I was mute. Um, no demo, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, they're busy with other stuff. Um, Sipke still kept working on workload a little bit. Uh, Nick on 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 JSON API. So that's good. Progress is Graph made. GraphQL. GraphQL, sorry. Yeah, um, it looks good. So fixing setup. Fixing setup. Yep, setup was broken, which was bad. Merge branch master into dev. Um, deploying master and you get it all automatically. This is done. So now you can see we deploy. If we push something on master and it's not a pull request, well, if you push something on master, will deploy to NuGet. If we push something on dev branch, we'll deploy on MyGet. Okay, so we have two repositories, one with the dev branch and one with the master branch. Um, so the master branch being always the latest release, public release, and dev branch the current work, because we don't have so far like 1.10.x and 1.x, we don't have two, a major version and a minor version, we just have one version. So it's, um, that's it. So it's tagged beta one and, um, and and tag beta one tag beta one what I say uh, yeah the version is beta one. Uh, uh, asking a question, yeah. is it uh, a security issue to have the GitHub <laughs> API key in the version control? The new get API key and my get API key are secure. They are encrypted using your private key. So on and that's that's very nice actually. So the idea is that you go on their portal, you authenticate because you own the the repository. Uh, on a beaver, on a beaver. and then you give um, a secret and they encrypt it using, using their own private key of their system. Mm -hmm. So what okay. we put in the GitHub is actually encrypted. Only a beaver can decrypt it. Got it. Okay. Good. Very, very nice. And you can do it for any value. You see Docker password, my get, you get. That's super nice. And Travis is doing the same thing. I will show you. Um, and actually, and I would say I will show you. I, yeah, but that, you trust me. That's good. Um, so another thing is that I fixed then the conditions because when I push this thing, actually it actually ran it, but I didn't want to run it, but it ran it, so that's fine. Then it was fixed. The issue was yeah some bad PowerShell from my side. I'm learning every day. Um, and at that point, I asked everyone not to push anything on master because it will push on NuGet. And guess what? Someone made a pull request. Not, I don't think it was Gentil. I think yeah, it was Unique who managed it. But that's fine because I already made a mistake right before. So it's very important. So. <laughs> and also, so that's good. Uh, modular page. So that, that that's better. Well, actually, yes, it got no. It, no, actually, it didn't. It didn't go out. It didn't it, go it out. Got merged after. It didn't go out. Yes, because then I fixed something, so it didn't go out somehow. Um, so we need to republish. But that's fine. Um, I was keeping it for later. Yeah, we probably should actually push this out because it does break uh, production. Once we build. officially decide release, we'll publish a, uh, oh, it okay. breaks your production because you're the only one using you get packages and on production. Yeah, so, but it's anything with the environment variable set to production. So very, very soon, very, very soon. Mm -hmm. So what we have now is on you get org. If you look for Orchard Core, you get many things. All the things are on NuGet.org. There is only one version. Um, beta 1, 33, Why? Why does it say downloads 26, but on the right says total downloads 98? They have different stats. Total, oh, because there is a hidden version, which is the one I created like three or four months ago. You remember when we had the NuGet Park uh, issues? 001 Alpha. Yeah, so it was unlisted, but people could still download it if they tried things or I don't know, or maybe there are things automation from NuGet that tries stuff. So we have all the packages on NuGet.org. So you don't need a custom NuGet.config to grab the packages. Uh, we still have the MyGet, so you can use the MyGet feed to get dev branch and use the NuGet.org to get the master branch. Uh, we'll only push on master when 
we think there is an important update or a new release or important patch. Okay, it's not uh, master is not our CI target. Dev is the CI target, um, the day-to-day -day target. But master when we want to do public releases, um, like like on Ultra one. Um, we also have this blue badge, check mark, uh, which means we own Orchard Core. Okay, everything which is Orchard Core that star is our well, actually, it's mine, but what is mine is yours, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's good. Um, nobody can impersonate Orchard Core, so everything which is Orchard Core is from us, officially. Um, these are the official Orchard Core packages, whatever package it is. And we have, like, lots, yeah, 118, that's a lot of, of uh, packages, but you, you know them all. Uh, so that's here, and and so if you look at, uh, I never know, Chris Spain blog Orchard, Chris Spain blog Orchard. This is our uh, official documentation about uh, deploying Orchard. George, you should look at it if you haven't yet. It's beautiful. Create a new project, and I assume this step is now no more necessary. Okay, you don't need to add this feed to be able to use Orchard like this. Just NuGet.org will work. Just point to the package, run it, done. You have Orchard running. Beautiful. OK. Um, let me know if I'm missing something. Uh, so that's it for NuGet. And now, and so right now I just made one deployment. Um, we'll do one merge to master when we release officially uh, the beta one, which will be very soon. I will show you. Um, We'll have bug fixes. Everything we have in dev right now will go in the in master for sure. Uh, moving stuff around from Nick, this is his branch. Um, yeah, optimization from Jean Thierry, who is not now copying liquid files automatically anymore, only if there are these files. Uh, updating the README with the new packages or new images. Um, Fixes. I renamed the file license.txt to license without an extension because let me see if it worked. Uh, there is some automation on the GitHub site that doesn't work. I was expecting GitHub to detect this. Oh, maybe because no, it's on dev, it's a different branch because GitHub should have detected the file and added a an image saying we are MIT directly on the on this bar. I don't know why it doesn't show up because I followed the guidance, or maybe they can't parse that. But it should be easy to parse. I don't know. I think we didn't select it when we set the repo up. No, and you can only select it when you set the repo up. Yeah. But unless we have a license file which they are supposed to parse, so I don't know why it doesn't show up. I looked at the documentation. That's why I changed the. I, I actually looked too, and I couldn't find out why it why it wasn't showing up. Maybe the header is not in the format they are expecting. That's another possibility. We we'll look into it then. Um, adding support for Orchard App Data Environment variable, which solves many problems with just one environment variable. That's awesome. Um, so this thing is that if you set a path inside the environment variable, it will use this path to store the app data folder, to use the as the app data folder. So by default, the app data folder is uh, what is called the content root, um, or the root container path from from ASP.NET slash app data, okay, like an Orchard one. So local folder slash app data. If you set something in Orchard app data, it will look for the folder, and if the folder exists, it will use this folder to save the app data. It's useful, for instance, if uh, you are in a multi-node environment and you want two servers to share the same app data without having to use blob storage or anything like this, just a file system and a shared drive, then you can point to this shared drive and all the setups will use this one. It's also very useful on um, Docker, if because a Docker container will store the app data in the Docker um, container, and if you restart your Docker container, you will lose all your information. So by doing that, you can move the app data to the host environment, um, and then it will be persisted. 
And the third point is that on Azure, there is a support also for that thing for Azure web app containers that you can map to a specific folder named home. So by setting that to slash home on Azure containers, then we can also reuse the home folder from Azure containers and um, share that across different container uh, instances uh, and scale out very easily and also store the state. Uh, so that's easier actually than using blob storage as long as we have a file system that is persisted. We still need the file system, the blob storage uh, version of that, but this will solve already lots of issues very easily. Uh, I, I can show you also how it works with the core containers on my machine. Uh, so that's very good. Um, when you mentioned that it uses that folder if it exists, what happens if it doesn't exist? It will revert to app data because it can't, it might not have the rights to create the folder on the host environment. So it just falls back to the local app data folder. I'm wondering if maybe it's, it would be better if it just failed and crashed so that you at least discover that that's not. Um, it was failing before I did something. And the issue is that, for instance, on Azure Container, it's failing, but you just see service unavailable. And you don't know why. You have no mm. idea why. But if you go to the logs, then it will be obvious that the folder it says, oh, I can't, fi I can't, could not find the folder, blah, blah, blah. So by going to the log, you will see it. And we've, if we failed, um, I see, so you could see it now. Yeah, now it will work, but you, yeah. But, it but you will never know. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I was, actually I was thinking about it this morning about not failing, but adding a log like um, could not find this app data folder, so reverting to the default one. So at least I should do that. So yeah. if we don't know why, we can look at the log and, and see why. Or throw an exception with the message, and then it will be obvious in the front end. It will uh, be the best. Way. Yeah, you're right. It's better to fail than support, uh, than have a degraded mode and and it won't, it won't do what we think it will do. I, mm. Because I had this, this issue this morning. I didn't know why it was not working. And in the end, it, it was a bad configuration on my side. Uh, OK, yep, yeah, good. Thank you. Um, fixing startup. Yeah, you see exactly that. <laughs> if the path doesn't exist, then. Oh, no, this one is different. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, yes. Um, that's different. Uh, I have to check because there is another thing, which is when the folder doesn't exist, it might be expected. No. No, what? OK, my issue was that the folder didn't exist because it was a new setup. And if the folder wasn't existing, then it will not even go to setup. So it can not exist. Because, some, because it can create it on, like the app data can be created locally. But if it can't create it, then it should show the display message that I can't even create it. I found it. Well, I found your setting, but I can't create it. And it doesn't exist. So there is an issue. OK. But um, if it doesn't exist, we should be able to go to setup because because there is no settings. So we might have to create it later. Yeah, okay, makes I sense. Will. Um, Jean Thierry, this was a branch which has been merged somewhere here, so I will talk about it later. Um, Antoine updating to Bootstrap Beta 2 um, and fixing some recipes. It has been merged, uh, adding some documentation. This is uh, Nick on, on GraphQL. Prevents recipes from being copied twice. So that was an issue with, with Docker again. When we published uh, Orchard Core, the recipes were copied with the module and at the root because because of custom metadata in the CS proj. I checked this morning and it's fixed now. Um, this is Antoine's merge from the Antcolic content item IDs. So we, it, it will have been fine because it's a unique identifier but it's better to just generate a new one where every time we run the recipe. So it changed the hard-coded identifiers for new dynamic identifiers. Um, and this is a fix for material to be able to configure a middleware globally, meaning for all tenants, before it forks for each tenant. Um, just a fix. There was a method for that, but it wasn't working as expected. And uh, Nick told me on uh, 
on GitHub that you can do the same thing for services, like configure services uh, globally for all tenants also. It's just, I just don't know how to do that. Uh, we need to document that. Um, good. Nick, 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 Nick. We have two Nick mains. We have a Nicholas main and we have a Nick main, depending on which computer is using, apparently. <laughs> um, that's it. Questions? Um, demo, demo first. Demo first. The, the web of the company I'm working for, and I migrated it to Orchard Core. So pre previously, it was a, a, a one-page HTML website. So a single page. So it was easy to migrate it. So Antoine, just to let you know that we have the same issues as last time, meaning sometimes when we when you talk, we can hear you very well, and sometimes it just cuts out. So you okay. continue, but we might not understand everything you say. OK. So I created a solution and added uh, an ASP.NET Core application. I referenced the Orchard Core application CMS target nugget package. I configure. The blog made by Chris Payne. And then I started uh, creating a, a website using the, the agency recipe. Landing page. So, because we can't hear Antoine, uh, the agency recipe comes with a landing page content type, and here is showing how to edit the template for the content type, the landing page content type, and hence change the full theme of the single page application. Yes. and I did all the necessary scripts and CSS I needed and made a layout dot in my template. So can you modify the markup from your from the uh, UI? So this your this is your te your template. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're you're modifying the template in your theme. Yes. No, I there are two that. things. There's a layout. This is, this is overriding it, right? No, there is a layout, and there yeah. is the template for content for the landing page content type. Right. Okay, I'm with you now. Fine. Cool. Do we know if the preview stuff works in um That's what he's showing right now. Oh, I didn't it... try it, but it should work, right? Yeah, I think so. That is... Firefox and so just, Chrome are on par I, I, with local I'm not storage, sure, right? I'm not sure Daniel has seen that. Let, let, so, Daniel, you see? You click, uh, maybe you didn't see. You click on the preview at the bottom, the, the same preview as Chris has done last year for Archer 1. And as you type on the admin, you will see you can move stuff. And as you type um, on the right, it will refresh. Live. I, I did see this, but I never saw it in a separate window before. Look at that. Support. Type something. Because you can type as long as you don't save. You moved. And accompaniment is first. 
you see web added on the right yeah it's nice mm. but this uh, ability to have it in a separate tab was added recently i, I guess Very recently yeah <laughs> a few months ago oh okay <laughs> <laughs> last time you came yeah yeah That's nice. And it's uh, quite a lot of change from the agency theme because uh, I assume it's using, using the same content type with a little bit of update. Like uh, I saw some, yeah, no, almost the same thing, team member or client, but you remove some things and uh, customize the, the theme, the CSS and everything. But that's keeping- cool, Antoine. Sorry? That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's, it's nice looks good yeah. and the editing experience should make a video of re redoing that completely like i said What's i will do assets is that i haven't seen assets assets before. is media but it's not a media oh, okay. so it's just assets just files so that's why it's called assets and it also maps to the um, liquid uh, tags which are called assets underscore url and which are standard in shopify also yeah that makes sense so here is showing a widget in the footer which should be the copyright or whatever it is. How come Contact. it's not displaying highlighting in here? Uh, it's uh, edit HTML, maybe because he made a field, or maybe this is how it's configured by default, just text field, not as HTML field. Okay. So HTML here is another widget, but if the content field is not uh, marked with the HTML editor, then you won't see the, it, may, it might just be a text area here. Of course. HTML widget and I assume it took that from the agency recipe and it might we might want to change it also you see if, if we made a mistake that's fine if it's not that and you see here multi-line okay and if it uh, switches to visible editor it's beautiful you might want to think of adding something like code in there or something boom so maybe you don't want it you see because there is pre yeah. rendering and well for for stuff like this like you might just want to be able to paste the html okay we, we might also want a, another uh, editor which will be a, a code or one like just syntax lighting that will be sufficient yeah like we have for editing the template yeah There are things I would like to change in this uh, recipe and theme uh, because right now, if you try from the the agency recipe, if you try to create a new page or blog, it will be super ugly because the the layout didn't support doesn't support that. Like the combination of the layout and the landing page default the landing page default template work, but they sh some things should be moved to the layout so that every page reuses the same header, for instance, with the menu. But at the same time, the menu is in the landing page content time type. So I think we should also move this menu into a menu item. I see mistakes, but just time. Um, that will be much more reusable for people to update it. Um, it will come, beta one, okay? Well, that looks nice. And I assume it's fast, we can't hear you. I'm not sure you are saying anything, but I know you are muted. Um, you can go on the website and see that it's fast. Um, a bonus point if you're resting it on Azure? No. Uh, I'm using uh, oh my God. Uh, SQLite database and I'm hosting on, on, on our uh, web server uh, okay. uh, on uh, IIS. You should go on the cloud. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on Azure if possible. It's better for me. Uh, it's better for Azure. Um, good. That's great. Thank you. Beautiful. That's the second known website on Orchard Core. The first one being Next One. Next One, but is that is that actually a website? It's just an app, right? Is that is that something public we can see and that runs on Orchard Core? Next. Um, no, not at the moment. It's all um, it's all internal, and we okay. don't we don't use it for the CMS. We only use the A. We only use it for modularity, and that's what the team really like about it. Is they just like using the modular stuff. That's good. And the multi-tenancy stuff. Could be modular and multi-tenant and online. Uh, yeah, the, the, well, they're, they're quite into their microservices at the moment. So it's, okay. um, it's all internal microservices okay. stuff. I was wondering if there was another one. So this is the only known one so far. There might be others, but 
Only public is known one. Christmas yeah. built something too on Orchard Core. Oh yeah, but which which site? Can we bring uh, it? I'm not sure I can disclose that, but if it's public, you can. You should ask him. Um, it might not be public yet. Okay, then wait. Ask Chris. Yeah. Um, beautiful. Uh, happy experience, Antoine. Or bad experience. Yes. Good. Well, <laughs> The, well, but you, it was easy because you knew how to do things. Yes. If someone <laughs> comes to a project and is like, okay, what do I do now? For example, ex explain to my boss how to make a, a, a dynamic uh, bag in liquid. Uh, and yeah. In one hour, he was able to, okay. to make uh, the services, you know? Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, section. A little video to explain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So next step. Um, let's release it. So, on Gitter, I published that. So let me open it in Gitter. Oh, yes, announcement. Uh, Gitter. Everyone should use Gitter, but not the Orchard 2 room. The Orchard Core room, which I created last week. And it's better to do it now than in six months. Okay. So, this way, once we release, we already have an Orchard Core room. This is the official one. I opened a ticket on Gitter so that they move all the previous messages from Orchard 2 to Orchard Core. They haven't answered yet. I should you show you share your desktop desktop, Sebastian. I can do that. Thank you, because if I show you if you hadn't say anything, nobody would have mentioned it until the end. <laughs> I, ju I just like interrupting you, that's all. That's good. I like it too. So Orchard Core. Okay, Orchard CMS, Orchard Core. So if you were on Orchard 2, just join the Orchard Core room. And whenever someone will talk on Orchard 2, I will tell them to go back on Orchard Core. I already set up some settings that if anyone joins the room, they will be told to go on Orchard Core. Okay. Uh, second thing is that on this room, Orchard 2, before I moved to Orchard Core, I shared um, release notes for Beta 1. Where is that? October. This one. Okay, this link. It's on GIST. Um, you should read it if you haven't yet. Um, let me share the URL in Skype. Um, what does it say? So this is um, a draft to be published on the ASP.NET website. Uh, so there will be much more visibility than anything else we can we can do. Uh, so uh, blah blah two years ago blah blah, 1,400 commits, uh, almost 300,000 lines of code, and 127 projects. Okay, that's good. And what is Orchard Core? Very important here. Two things: Orchard Core framework, blah blah modular, multi-tenant. Orchard Core CMS, web content management. So the two things. Okay. And you can use the one one without the other. Uh, do we agree with that? You can disagree, but let's talk about it. I think everyone will agree about with that. Um, what is beta? So I explain what beta is again. Copy pasting. It's, it's the same thing as on our roadmap to explain to people that it's a beta, so they should expect bugs and breaking changes. But it's stable enough, and we are proud of the product, so they should tr start trying trying that before it's too late to to jump on board and, and give feedback. So that's the best moment to try it and give feedback before we ship your NRC. Because you can still break things. Um, then two paragraphs, one bigger than the other. Building software as a service solutions with your Oracle framework. Um, what we expect people to do, like community-based ecosystems of hosted applications, which can be extended with modules. Example, e-commerce system, block engines, or whatever you want. Enable the modular environment that allows different teams to work on separate parts of an application without the S and make components reusable across projects. Okay. Um, okay. And what's new in Orchard Core CMS? Okay, re-implementation and all the things that I thought about. So performance, um, portable, so works on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Uh, document database abstraction, which is new. We are only new get packages. Um, you have live previews. You have liquid template support. Um, custom queries. 
So you can create any SQL query or async query and expose them as API or in widgets and templates. Beautiful. Uh, recipes, which is not new but updated, and they can be part of NuGet packages, which was a long request from uh, Bertrand. Um, and actually, our themes are NuGet packages which contain the recipe. So the theme comes with the specific recipe for this theme, and that's beautiful. I love it. Um, scalability. Um, so improvement in scalability, actually. Um, so you can host much more tenants than before, and they are much more faster. Uh, and then resources, so, so how do you start? Um, you can use Orchard CMS in two minutes by following this tutorial from Chris, okay? The famous blog post. I will, we will reference it like for years and years now, unless we make it an official documentation at some point somewhere. Uh, you can also use the available Docker images on Docker Hub. I'm just, I, I keep using it because it's so easy to start Orchard with, uh, with that. I mean, one command line and you have an Orchard running. That's so crazy on Linux or on Windows, on the cloud, it's super easy. If, if you don't know what Docker is and or think Docker is useless and you don't get what the point of it, which I thought a few months ago, then you should look at again or ask me and I will show you why it's, why it's good. Um, <clears throat> pointing to documentation also, which is very important in the docs because we have a nice documentation. Um, development plan, the Orchard source core is available on GitHub, a roadmap that will up I updated, but I will update once the beta is released, and the pointer to the GitHub room, which is wrong now. So I have two things to fix. And excuse me, but I will do it now, or I will forget. Wait, what was it? Of an application and 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 um, Orchard call. If you find a user issue, feel free to share. Um, that's it. Questions, comments on this thing. So this is to answer Orchard call beta one. It will be published on ASP.NET website when I want, when we want. So we just have to say let's go merge and master and sure everything is working and um, and then ship that. Oh, something I, I would like to have before shipping. So we have this uh, uh, blog post announcement, this blog announcement. Um, uh, what do we have also? I have an article about uh, how to deploy, how to, yeah, how to start um, Orchard Core CMS. We have a, a tutorial and um, repository for modularity. Um, we also have something simple on the documentation. What did I think we are missing? Um, we need a tutorial on how to, a video or something written to start up the, the agency and to show how to edit the content, like very minimum content editing things for the CMS. Because right now we don't have any um, tutorial for that. So I will probably work on that unless someone wants to do that. Um, but I think as long as we have documentation or videos to explain, at least for people who want to actually use it, what to do, we can't ship. That would be that would be stupid because it would be like, okay, there is something, but how do I use it now? Um, for the modular things, we are fine, but for the CMS, we are missing at least a video and article on how to use it and with a little nice demos. Video will be nice because we could show the, the live preview and everything. Um, Questions, comments? When uh, when is this page uh, scheduled to be published? When we want. As I said, as as soon as we have a video, an article for the CMS part, we can we can ship. Okay. This announcement is ready. Um, Everything is stable on the dev branch. We can just merge master when we decide to to jump. But yeah, so yeah, if if we raise that now, they will be like, okay, how do I use the CMS? Where no, like there is there is nothing right now. We have videos on this meeting, but we don't have anything public that we with an announcement. So with the announcement, that would be nice to have a video to. So you can just like a two minute video to show simple things. Should we have uh, Chris put something together? Are you sure? 
why why what why Chris? Because he's got some time, he wants to do it. He's he's building up somewhat of a reputation now. <laughs> sure. I'm sure uh, well, but you know guys that well, you, you, I don't care about reputation because I have a salary which comes every every month. But that's also good if you want to take that as an occasion to build some reputation and put up some articles and videos and stuff, that's that's also the occasion. So mm. yeah, what you say is, is true. And that's also a good opportunity. I mean, it's, it's the early days and it's easy. And there will be lots of visibility, much more than any time now uh, after that. I mean, yeah. I remember when we shipped Orchard 1, this is when we had the most visibility everywhere. And also, it's also very important not to screw up because the first impression lasts very long. Like if you ask people how Orchard feels, they will tell you what they remember from Orchard 1 seven years ago. Okay? When it, there was no modules and it was slow. So for everyone, Orchard doesn't have any modules and it's slow. When I say everyone, I mean not you because otherwise you'd not be there. Uh, so just, just, just saying. That's, I, I think we should be, I'm very proud of what we have right now. Nobody can say it's slow. Nobody can say we don't have any modules. We have much more modules than Orchard V1. We are missing stuff, but that's, that's fine. We can create websites and which are nice with uh, this beta. Um, but if we, at, at least we should have a video or a tutorial to explain how to use a CMS and some simple things like how, no, at least to every, everything we have done during these meetings, these Tuesday meeting, have 10 seconds showing what like the live preview, how what is a liquid template, how to do custom queries, um, recipes during the setup, like creating a new tenant, all these little things that will show what it can do and convince people to use. And as I was saying that, I was thinking about the, the craft CMS. Uh, I already showed that many times, but um, if you look at the craft CMS website, that that's how also people love this this thing because if you look at the features there's a features page this thing if we had that that would be awesome look at that every little feature like live preview Ex so we, we took live preview from their id okay so they have a one minute video showing live preview you see you change on the left and change on the right exactly the same thing and that's super demo i mean when you show that to a to an editor, they are like, I want to use this. Like the layer, the the flow module, we took that from them. Same thing. They have a they have a, a thing that they call it the matrix, but I don't see any video on that. But maybe it's part of your same. So you see, like something like this: one minute videos about things we can do, templating and querying, user management. That that would be super great for people to to believe um, that your church CMS is for them. Can be used, can be used by them, or will fulfill a need. Um, we should have something like that. Or oh, matrix. Okay, I missed the first item actually. So matrix is the. You see one minute for the matrix, which is our flow page. Is it? Do we still call it flow page, or do we call it page? Because I think we wanted to call it page. I think we call it page, right? Antoine will tell us, but yeah. So media management stuff we have like liquid templates. We sh we should do that. I mean that's that's so awesome. Page. Yeah, that's what we wanted to do. Um, and also, I think uh, we have something called Liquid Template. Did we rename it to just Template? No, we have Templates, which can be done in Liquid, but... No, we have something called Liquid Page. Um, did we rename it to Template Page or something like that? I think we wanted to rename it to Template Page or something which does not involve the name Liquid, because that's technical. I you look into that? That's an easy change. Liquid page, we should change that, I think. We talked about it, I think we have an issue for that. Um, yeah, so opinions, ideas, what do you think? Should we have that when we ship the beta or can we just have a tutorial and do it later? This should be easy to do. Um, as you know, it's, the preparation is not that much for a one minute video. If there are lots of one minute videos, you you can screw up and start again or iterate quickly. Like if we, if we even if we change a feature, we can re record this one minute video 
if we do a big video of one hour, we have to stick it for years or change everything. That's bad. Having lots of little videos like this, it's cool. And people can see, I think that that's a nice idea. I like it. I don't think it makes sense to delay the beta just waiting for this to be finished. Okay. But it would maybe make sense to delay the first release until we have this. Oh, okay. We can also do it step by step, like add little videos for each feature every time. Uh, oh, something else. Um, we got way more documentation than when we had when we went live with Orch Orchard One. Yes, so we are still missing very important pieces. Like we are, but we still have a lot more than we did previously. Yeah, that's good because you, the, the flow that we have the docs in the repo is easier to maintain the docs while we write the features. It's more, much more encouraging to to do that, um, and we can also refuse a pull request if the features changes without the doc. That's also easier. Um, there's something I wanted to say. I'm not sure because it was not obvious when I got the email, but uh, I think I will do the live.asp.net this afternoon with Anselman and Sean Galloway. Um, they mentioned Orchard Core with all the packages. I'm not sure they mentioned they wanted the CMS part of it, so just the framework. Um, I, have, I haven't got any confirmation from them, I, I need to know. Um, so that might be also um, a way to to show off to so some things that, that we do and without making videos, like at least it will be recorded uh, and people will discover stuff, will be able to, yeah. That's an easy way to, to record a video, like we did for Channel 9 with the Orchard Core framework, with the modular thing. So I don't know, this should be this afternoon around 3.45, but I didn't get any confirmation. Uh, if they just want also the, the framework or and the CMS. Um, ultimately, it will be, I would love to have two different sessions, one for the framework and one for the CMS, because that gives more time and there is a lot of time that, well, we, we can fill up like two days of content like this. And uh, that will be obvious that there is a clear separation of um, the framework and the CMS. We demo just off the NuGet packages. Yes, I will try my best to demo just off the NuGet packages. That's what I did. did uh, I did a demo internally at work, mm -hmm. just using the NuGet packages, and it worked perfectly. Um, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure when I show when I will show the the Chris Payne scenario, which is <laughs> we call it the Chris Payne scenario because he blog about it. Um, but uh, when I will show it to Edward and Anselman. I assume they should be blown away because being able to host a CMS just with one NuGet package, views and everything, modular and multi-tenant, that's, that's crazy, right? That's awesome that you can do that. And, um, and they have no idea that we can do that. I so, thought you, have you not demoed this to Edwards I, before? I have demoed it to the team, but, um, but they, have, they haven't seen it. They haven't seen it. Yeah, it was a dev, the dev meeting, so only the dev, so that not, um, Edwards didn't see that, so I'm not sure he knows how he knows about the features we have. He doesn't know about the the fact that it's just a single package too. Yeah, I don't think so. We'll see. The question is, will he care? I was thinking the same. Yes, I, yes, he cares. Yes, about modularity, multi-tenancy. Yes, uh, we can't do that in the SPN team for resources and because it's too complex uh, and too opinionated. Um, but uh, no, they officially support Orchard Core framework for this thing. So whenever an issue is filed on the MVC repo, the SPNet Core repos, asking for modularity or multi they just say use Orchard Core. That's our cool. answer. That's good. Officially. So and, yeah, and I, some, some visibility with Hanselman would be very useful. Yes. That's why I'm saying if we go on live SPNet, we are we will blow, host the 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 announcement on ASP.NET website, which is good. Uh, we'll do a live ASP.NET, which is also good. So then after, oh yeah, that's oh, that's not our decision. Well, my decision. That's the, their decision. They talk about what they want to talk about. Okay, but .NET Core, they should, yeah, should push it. CMS. Yeah. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, that's cool. So yeah, we need more articles and uh, content. So blog posts are um, always welcome, Daniel, to push Chris to do it. 
unless you want to write a blog post. It's also nice to write a blog post about a, a topic because you learn the topic when you start writing about it. Um, and um, and I look into making videos. The issue is making videos is that I have a fucking French accent and uh, people might prefer, uh, I don't know, German That's accent. <laughs> German accent or a, a Swedish accent or uh, uh, you, you you might want to contact someone on the channel 9 team maybe they would be open to collaborating on something like that like like making the voice of the video like, like yeah mean, like you would write the script maybe and someone else would narrate it I'm, I'm sure i don't even have to go to the channel 9 team i'm sure i can ask any like i ask 10 people i know we who have an american accent an english accent sure. and they will just record it right yeah. Yeah. as long as i can do the demo and record the, the i can even do everything with my voice and then they can just dub me what yeah, i say They have much better material, but we don't we don't need that. A simple screencast will, will work here. We don't need even editing the videos by cutting. We can do that. I'm super good at that now. I've practiced years of Orchard conferences. <laughs> but yeah. What do you use nowadays? Um, Premiere. Okay. Just that. That's the best. Super. The, That's which, not. Yeah. Which version of Premiere? Always the latest, because you always get 30 days free trial <laughs> <laughs> so okay, just create was, my next question was do you have an adobe subscription you just create new uh, accounts and you get new newly 30 days of trial <laughs> i know but um that work, it, it works i should ask for a budget i don't but, but it's a subscription now right and i just use it like 10 days per year uh, so another option for you might be to have, I, I believe we have Camtasia licenses somewhere. We have a, an Adobe CC license you could use for that purpose if you want, Sebastian. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. You put it on, on the gist. <laughs> <Shall, shall laughs> tweet, tweet the link with your account and I can use it. I'm just committed to, to the report. Yeah, honestly, it's it's super important for Orchard Harvest because I have to do lots of um, manipulation for uh, you know synchronizing the videos, feed, video feeds we have with the sound and um, the screen. Uh, if it's locally recorded, it will be much easier because I will just have to cut because the, the video and the sound will be on the same thing. It will be much easier. For so yeah, I mean, I will still use other Premiere because I know it now, but the work for to to. to to do that will be much easier than a, than a harvest conference. Yep. Uh, if you guys want to own a topic of on the documentation or so, that would be great. So I will just assign you guys some things to do, like one or two paragraphs about or some code sample to do. Um, example, um, liquid syntax like sim even a blog post about how to do some very simple thing about liquid syntax or how to use a sql query like how to write a sql query what you can do with it how to deploy it as an api and run it and that, that's that will be like simple snippet or blog post and that will be super useful to to drive the conversation and show people how to do these things if you have a, if you want to spare an hour writing a blog post or a documentation article please do that a guide um, something i really like also from uh, let me show you what that we should do spring boot who knows about spring boot raise your hands nobody knows about spring boot it's a um, java framework by pivotal they have a nice logo right we could take their theme and it will work. What they have there is this guide section. A guide section is just a list of articles uh, straight to the point to do very specific things. In Orchard, it will be like uh, how to create a template for a blog post, okay? How to create a theme layout, something like that. And then always the same format, some code, explanation, and you just follow the steps, you write what they say you to write, and in the end, you have the thing. Okay, so there are guides. I think we need guides like this. Um, and uh, they are unorganized, okay? 
because it's hard to organize these kind of things. There are little tasks to do, but at least it answers to specific questions with a tutorial uh, oriented um, content. And you find then all the things you need to do. And it's easy also to create because you don't have to find a place to put it, just an article, a tutorial to do specific things. Um, I like it. Yeah, we should, we should, we should focus on that. And we will create a section with guides in the documentation and, and have that. So just saying. Um, I will try to do as much as I can. So if you have want to create guides like for creating SQL queries, loosing queries, very simple one. You don't have to go deep in the features with all the properties and options and everything, everything you can do, but just to, to bootstrap people into doing things, into using the feature. Um, yeah. Like Chris Payne's uh, blog post is a, is a mini guide to start a portion, done. And then, oh, goes to the setup and you're done. You can go to the next guide or next step, which is maybe, I don't know, creating a content type or templating a content type, whatever. So I think that's good. Um, cool, cool. That's it, one time, nothing else. So yeah, um, watch for the live SPL this afternoon or tonight uh, and uh, watch for the release on master when we merge master and articles and communication. So if you have blog posts to share also at the same time, that would be great that we can all publish at the same time and then make some noise being like tweeting and blogging about that. Okay, momentum. Feel free to also come on Gitter to talk, ask questions if you're stuck, if you don't know what to do or want help, we are always there. So you'll get better, faster answer answers. That's it. Okay, thanks everyone. See you on Thursday. Very See nice. You. Take a look at my um, startup file, Sebastian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look at it. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you all.